staring at me. Was I? Are you a wise guy? Who are you? Who, me? I'm nobody. Who are you? You got a real problem, don't you, college boy? I'm out of college, no. I don't have a problem. You do. What now? Some kind of a nut. Yeah. A bonehead. A real bonehead. <laughs> this town is full of bone heads. That's what I love about this town. God, I love Chicago! I don't know what they taught you at federal school, but when I studied surveillance, the first rule was never make eye contact with a subject. The second was never engage him in conversation because that way he will almost certainly notice you. What was all that about? I wanted to see what he looked like. I wanted to hear his voice. Straight out of the cradle. I can tell this is going to be a long haul. A long haul it may be, Mr. Malone. But beginning tomorrow, we're going to start doing some good. Day, Catherine. I heard his voice. Hey. Al Capone. You're kidding me. Where? Mr. Malone and I went down to Union Station. He was just coming back from a vacation in Florida. I'd seen him once before. When? At the Rialto Theater. He walked up the aisle and locked eyes with me. You were there, remember? That was him, wasn't it? Oh, my God. He was just another street thug back then, wasn't he? Nothing's changed. Now he's just a bigger street thug. Oh, I just got to chill. I mean, that night, he singled you out of all those people. Could he somehow have known? Known what? That you would be the one to bring him down. No one's been brought down quite yet. But he will be. And my husband will be the man to do it. Do you get this feeling often? This feeling of dread? Sometimes, Father. It's a wonder, given the dangerous life you lead, Alphonse. I guess you're right, Father. I do lead a dangerous life. I mean, I stay happy most of the time. But today, when I got back home, I felt this kind of dark cloud come down along me. Do you have any notion of what may have caused this? I don't know. Just gotten off the train. And I saw this guy staring at me. I could tell by the way he was looking at me. They hated me. Some money I don't even know. Would saying a confession help you? Being in a state of grace gives a wonderful feeling. What, right here? Right here. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My life. 
last confession was a long, long time ago, Father. Attention! I'm Elliot Ness. I understand you're some of the untouchable police officers on the Chicago force. I'm proud to know you. Our reconnaissance tells us that there's a Capone Brewery in full daily operation at 4478 Racine. We'll leave for that location now, assembling without fanfare at the schoolyard of St. Mary's Parish, 1378 Mead. Now we'll move in together, dividing our force so we can hit all four faces of the building at the same time. Gentlemen, this morning we start taking our city back. Let's do it with pride. Ready, Mr. Malone? Ready. Gentlemen. Let's go. Gentlemen, it looks like our uh, reconnaissance was... Ah, gee. Sorry, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to your new headquarters. The reason for our new and rather austere surroundings is that Mr. Malone feels that the walls of the federal building may have ears. Well, there's no chance of that here, sir. We don't even have walls, nor heat. Things will improve, gentlemen. I'll requisition some furniture, even a furnace. Once we've had our first success. Now, let's talk about what went wrong. They knew about our raid far enough in advance to move every vat, every barrel, every truck. How? Obviously, there was a leak. Either that or our intelligence was wrong in the first place. Yeah, the brewery looked like it was empty for a month. My snitch was not wrong. The bad guys were tipped off well in advance. Our police support didn't even know about the raid until an hour before it happened. So I suggest that the next time you organize a raid, you don't advertise the fact in any way. Now, the men who came with us may not have known in advance, but their superiors did. The only superior knew about it was Police Chief Russell. Maybe some of his staff. I don't think any of them picked up the phone and called up Al Capone. Well, somebody did. Look, the first rule of police work, if you want to keep something secret, don't tell anyone. Now, I'd like to suggest that we dispense with the services of the local police totally from now on. What do we do about manpower? Some of these places are built like fortresses. Well, sir. Mr. Robbins and Mr. Pagano here have had an idea. Well, we were thinking, if you don't have manpower, you need something else. And what's that? Horsepower? It's the one we confiscated last Thursday. My brother-in-law works for Streets and Highways up in Skokie, and, uh, well, they have these snow plows, and, uh, well, we made a little moonlight requisition last Wednesday night. And, um, here it is. I like it. I like it a lot. Good work. Great work. All we gotta do is figure out where to try it. Ah, another secret weapon we may be able to use. Louis? This is Louis Basile. Old friend of mine. He's not working for Treasury, but with your approval, he will be working with us. Lewis is an ex-convict, gentlemen. He spent a year in Joliet for driving a beer truck for the Capone mob. He hates them now. He lost his son to them the night that Jaime Weiss was killed. 
Now, I'll vouch for his integrity without reservation. But finally, I think the decision has to be yours. Paul Robbins, welcome to the team. George. Colonel, welcome. Welcome aboard, Tony Pagano. Thanks, thanks a lot. Did that man know about the raid the other day? He did. Oh, there's your leak. What? He's an ex-con street guinea. They don't turn on their own. Mr. Malone, I've known Louis Basile for almost 15 years. He didn't provide any leaks. Look, when I accepted this assignment, I realized I'd be dealing with people who didn't have my background. You'd be working with college boys. All right. Now, I knew it would take us some time to, to, to work up some speed. But I thought you'd allow me to help you in that process. I thought you would allow me to show you how this town really works. We are all open to what you have to teach us, Mr. Malone. Listen, laddie. You start annoying Al Capone, and he's going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. Now, you can't afford to impedal your men with some half big social experiment. Louis Basile is not a social experiment. He's here to help us, just like you are. Well, you're the boss. Yes, I am. All right. OK. Well, I guess I'm out. Louis, you're here early. I had a tough night, Elliot. You got a minute? Um, I was up last night thinking, and, uh, I, uh, I know you lost Mr. Malone because of me. The captain and I had our differences right from the start. Don't worry about it. Elliot, I appreciate your kindness. I appreciate your faith, but, um, uh, I think it may be best if I just, if I just step out. I thought you wanted to bring down Capone. I'd do it myself if I could. They killed my boy. Don't walk out on me, Louie. Tonight's operation, it came from information provided by you. Look, let's see how this one goes. Then you can decide. So I'm standing there, and this redhead, she's looking at me like, what's wrong with you, party pooper? Well, the closet door is ajar. So I say, will you come on out, sir? <clears throat> the door opens, buck naked, not even a towel on, is my watch commander. Oh. <laughs> what did he say? He says to me, are you looking for a transfer, son? I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I got the wrong room. <laughs> How long were you with the cops, Tony? Year. I saw corruption. Mm. I didn't like it much. Took my civil service exam and I switched over. <laughs> A toast to the Chicago cops for all their help tonight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> A toast to that. Seriously, fellas. A toast to our newest member, Louis Basile. Truly one of Chicago's finest. You did good today. For an ex-jailbird. <laughs> you know, as many times.
times I heard that tune. Every time you play it, I still hear something new in it, Professor. Aim to please. Yeah. Where'd you learn to play like that? Here and there. So I paid my way through college, playing dances, fraternity parties, things like that. And I envy you, Professor. Lately, I've been thinking about how much I've missed in life. The business I'm in, the people I deal with, the pressure. I mean, where does it all leave you in the end? You're asking me? Yeah, you're the philosopher. Plato says that the first step on the path to wisdom is a realization you don't know a damn thing. <laughs> no kidding. But what do you say, Professor? Eh? What do you say you suggest to me so many great books to read? Get together with me. Help me to understand exactly what the writers meant. I'll pay you. What? Three hits out, Cicero, Al. George E.Q. Johnson's new Untouchable Feds. Thank you, do me a favor. Get to these guys, all right? Talk to them. Find out exactly what it's going to take. Make a deal with them. Yeah, I'll do what I can. You know, I lost a million dollars today, Professor. Well, you figure it out over the next six months, probably lost $10 million. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Shakespeare, Henry IV, part two. Shakespeare, huh? Easy for him to say. He didn't wear the crown. He's always pushing me to Yeah, but Gladys is always... I think they're like this. Ladies work here? Yes, we do. Yes. Right here. Oh. Do you work around here? No. Would you like an afternoon? Hello, I'm just talking to him. I know you. He's cute. Come on. I got a meeting with Mr. Ness. Look out! this morning, $50,000 in $100 denominations was tossed out of a car at two special agents of the Treasury dedicated to the war against organized crime in this city. It's Capone money, folks. We want to express our gratitude for this generous donation to the Patrolman's Benevolent Association. It will be appreciated by the wives and families of officers killed in the line of duty. Get a good picture of this. Send the word to Capone loud and clear. He's dealing with men that are untouchable. They won't be bought, and the raids will continue until Capone and his kind are driven from the streets of Chicago. I'll take questions now. Mr. Johnson? Lori Green, The Daily News. Yes, I'm in the screen. I've been calling your office all morning. See, I'm looking to put together a profile of whoever it is that runs this unit. You know as well as I do, that wouldn't be possible. Have a good day. Oh, come on, counselor, talk to me. Why are you hiding this guy? Look, obviously the bad guys already know who he is. Why not let the good people know? Chicago needs a hero real badly right now, Mr. Johnson. They need to know there's hope. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going through the land of the balloons here. Look, <laughs> Sonny's the captain of the boat. You have a fun Sonny. Hey, Stitch, get over here and take a picture, huh? What do you think I pay you for, to stand around stuffing your face with birthday cake? Yeah. Gee, Honey, I gotta take care of something for a couple of seconds. Damages on the three places they hit last night. $250,000 on the Milner Brewery. Just under $300,000 on the Berardi Depot. And the entire Canadian shipment at the Glendora Warehouse. Guzik's working on those numbers. Sit down, Phobos.
Just don't you know? Same bonehead who screwed with me at the train station. Elliot Ness. Just another crusader looking for headlines. Just say the word, Al. I'll cut the head off the snake. You're a long man, Frankie, and I loved you for. If we kill a Fed, we can end up with the militia right at our doorsteps. Well, we gotta do something about these guys, because they've been hitting us hard, Al. Now, you remember Louis Basile? Yeah, he used to drive for us. I remember he had a kid killed by accident when we hit Army Weiss. Well, I think for revenge, he's been working with these guys. That's why they've been able to hurt us so bad. He knows all the locations of our installations, delivery routes, who the players are. What do you suggest we do, Frank? Good news is he's an ex-con. I don't think anybody would get too upset if an uh, ex-jailbird met an untimely end. How about you, Frankie? He's a rat. Get rid of him. You know, it's a terrible thing when a man loses a child so young. Especially in such a violent way. Jimmy Diamond and do it. Make an example out of him, Frank. Happy birthday, Sonny. Yeah, happy birthday. What's it look like? I thought I'd start a scrapbook. <laughs> Some picture. I look like I'm 12 years old. What you look like is a future senator from the state of Illinois. Do I? Tell me what a, a contemptible low life Louis Basile was, how he met with a fitting end. No, I came to help you find his mother. Right now, you're about the last person on earth that I would ask for help. 
Mr. Malone. Oh, uh, by the way, I stopped by the morgue to view the body. I found this in Basile's pocket. Marquette, Diner, Clinton, and Adams. So? Well, it's a hash house of choice for mob fringe players. Now, I suggest that we go round there and do a bit of fishing and see what we can see. Let me ask you something. Why do you even care? Maybe I didn't like your boy. And on the look, who would have? Well, that doesn't mean to say I don't want to punish the murdering bastards that killed him. Now, you can accept my offer of help, or you can turn it down. But this is as near to an apology as I come. Now, that guy's a bookmaker. And that guy there, that's Walter Gramos. Gramos the Greek. My God, it's like a convention in there. What are we doing here? Why don't we canvas the neighborhood? I've already done that. Now relax, eh? A good fisherman baits his hook and waits. Hey. There's a fish that might be worth the hooking. It's Tony Granelli. Jenna Muscle. A real Dago's Dago. It happened in Chicago. That's the one dope who might know who done it. As I live and breathe, if it isn't fast, Tony Grinelli. Jesus, Malone, you're still alive. Well, I intend to stay that way as well. Now turn around slowly, let my partner here relieve you of that 1238 on your armpit. I got no beef with you. What the hell's going on? Coming for a little ride. I got some questions to ask you downtown. Like I told you guys before, I don't know nothing about no hit on Wednesday. Where'd you say it was? Clark and Drummond. News to me. I never set foot north of Division. Irish territory up there. Why don't you go ask some Mick about this? Innocent as a lamb, eh? Now you listen to me, you spaghetti-eating heathen. I know that you've got your snout in every trough in town, especially your friend Capone's. Now, who killed Louis Basile? Was it little Mike Campagna? How about redhead Jimmy Diamond? Now, he's used that nickel in hand trick before now, hasn't he? Or was it you? Eh? Did you finally get your guts together and go out and do a job all by yourself? You want to charge me with something? You go right ahead. Otherwise, you'll let me out of this barn. We can hold you as long as we like. Yeah, for what? Look, I'd love to cooperate with you guys. I mean, I know how hard it is to lose an old school friend. How did you know that Louis Basile was a friend of mine? How did you know we went to school? How did you know we went to school together? That's enough. He knows too much. Yes. Did he kill Louis? Granelli? No, no, he lost his stones for that kind of work years ago. But short as I'm standing here, he knows who did. So how do we get him to tell us? Well, that depends now, doesn't it? On how far we're prepared to go. As far as the law will allow us. Oh, that's it. Because in that case, we are dead in the water. What are you suggesting, Mr. Malone? What I'm suggesting is that we use what we have. Now, in there, we've got one perfectly sound Tony Granelli and a cell. We also have our wits and our words. Keep him off of me. All right. Take care, Mr. Granelli. Put him in a cell. 6 a.m. in the morning, kick him out. Huh? You had 6 o'clock in the morning, you're free to go. You let me go and then you hunt me down, that it? No. We're gonna leave that to your friend Snorky Capone. We're putting the word out on you, Tony. We picked you up on a weapons charge, and then we let you go. In return, you gave us Snorky's fine brewery on Archer Avenue, which we are going to bust tonight. Hey, wait a minute. Time you wake up, the brewery will be ancient history. And a couple of hours later, you will be too. Now you've got till 6 a.m. to tell us who killed Louis Basile.
this before with these Dago mobsters. Omerta. Omerta. Code of silence. I can't believe it. I'll take a good look at him. That's death, and you'll see a lot of that. I've seen death. But we killed that man. We killed him just as sure as if we'd used a gun. We took a gamble, and it didn't pay off. You knew this was a possibility. Listen, don't shed any tears over that piece of crap, Cornelli. He may not have killed Basile, but by God, he's killed a lot of people in his time. That I guarantee. Don't you get it, Malone? We just stooped as low as the people were supposed to be fighting. Well, how the hell do you want us to fight, eh? Marquis of Creamsbury rules? Eh? A little police work in the morning, then home to your lovely family at night? Walks in the park Saturday, church Sunday? We really are cut from a different cloth, aren't we? Yes, we are. Because I'm not in it for sport, and I'm not in it for some future political career. I'm in it to win. Get out of my way. Jeez. This is really curious. Hey, Frank, come here, listen to this. Then Odysseus of many councils looked fiercely on him and said, Stranger, thou hast not spoken well. Thou art a man presumptuous. So true is it that the gods do not give every gracious gift to all. Neither shapeliness, nor wisdom, nor skilled speech. I like that part. No shapeliness, no wisdom, no skilled speech. It's me. Presumptuous. I don't have an education. I thought Brooklyn. Hey, well, we need to talk a little business. Go ahead. Tony Grinelli was found hanging in a police lockup this morning. What happened? Well, Goose occurred that the Ness and his pals, they were leaning on him because of the Basile thing. Ness. He worries me. Do me a favor, friend. Organize a party. Go get those drummers from over at the Bama Club. My brain's tired. I want to get out of my head. today, Catherine. I helped it happen. What? We put him in a terrible squeeze, trying to get him to tell us who killed Louis Basile. Am I the man for this job? came over because a lot of years ago, I went through the same dilemma that I think you're going through now. 
You see, I realized that the only way to fight these people was to give my soul to the devil and get on with it. Well, no kind of compassion, no tenderness, just hatred, and vengeance. Get on with it. Only way to deal with these people. That was my choice. And for that, I shall go to hell. But what I want to say to you is this. If there's any way that you can walk away from this fight now, if, if, if your heart is not already so filled with hatred that you, you can still walk away, then in God's name, do it. Because if you commit yourself to this fight, the price that you will pay, and I speak from personal experience, the price that you will pay personally will be a very great one. I'm glad that you understand the moral gravity of it all, sir. You are not a simple man. The only thing worse than a red. The dishonest man. I'm talking about the hypocrites. Believe me, we live in a world full of them. Let's talk about the dishonest politicians who take our money and then they deliver speeches against us, damning us. Let's talk about this scum, Louis Basile, who took our money and promised us loyalty. And then he turned on us like a woman scorned. Ah! Liars and hypocrites! There are truly honest men out there. Men that bite in my arm and bring tears of joy to my eyes. These men I drink tonight. To Johnny Torrio, my beloved mentor, an honest man. To Lucky Luciano from New York, an honest man. To Benito Mussolini from the old country, also an honest man. And a man who holds his head up high and never lies. Frankie Rio, an honest man, an honest man has saved my life many times. My oldest and closest friend, Mr. Frank Liddy, an honest man. men as brave as my wife is pure here's to all the honest men of the world tonight I drink to you and to all the hypocrites of the world damn She's so beautiful, isn't she? You still can't sleep? I think I can now. 
Will you love me, Catherine? Even if it changes me. Forever. Always. This is the seat. Why don't you ride Let's rendezvous with the motor pool. Yeah. Let me talk to Snorky. Who's this? Elliot Ness. It's Ness. Elliot Ness, the pansy crusader. <laughs> what do you want? You look out your window in a minute. You'll see something that might interest you. What are you talking about? I got the press here too, Capone. I'll leave the line open. You can hear what I have to say to them. We're still not clear as to why we're here, Mr. Ness. Here. You're looking at the hearse that carries the body of a man by the name of Louis Basile. He was murdered by the man who you so often portray as the great court jester, the rake, the all-round good guy, whose greatest sin is, is, is merely providing the public with a few harmless pleasures. Yeah, will you tell that to the family and friends of Louis Basile? People, I called you here today because you need to start writing about the other side of Al Capone, the side that he so desperately tries to hide. This is the Al Capone, who, as, as we turn the other way, is literally destroying the American way of life in our city. The Al Capone who's buying our elected officials, buying our police, subverting our legal system. The Al Capone who has filled our city with vice so and corruption and, and ruthlessness has brought so much pain to so many families, like the Basiles. Now, the vehicles that you're seeing now, these cars and trucks, were each confiscated from various Capone breweries and illegal alcohol distribution centers. This is just the beginning. Because starting today, me and my team are putting Capone on notice. Either get out of Chicago, or we will throw you out using any means necessary. No more free reign of terror, Mr. Capone. No more, no more of any of it. I want him dead, Frank, you hear me? I want him at the ground! Anyone there? Yeah, we're still here. Give me the phone. You're dead, Ness. You hear me? You're dead! They're gonna find your body in a ditch somewhere. Your wife's gonna be working for me and my Louis Bordello. I'm gonna have your wife. You know what you thought of, you pansy, low-life hypocrite, son of a bitch. You're dead! 